This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at random and systematic errors. So let's start with random errors. Random errors are caused by unpredictable changes in the experiment. That's either in the conditions or the apparatus. With random errors, there is an equal probability of the measured value being too high or too low. Examples of random error are changes in the environment during the experiment, such as a change in the room temperature, the observer misinterpreting the reading, and insufficient data that's not conducting repeat trials. Random errors cannot be eliminated but can be reduced by conducting repeat trials. They can also be reduced by using precise apparatus, such as using a volumetric pipette rather than a beaker to measure volume. If we compare the uncertainty of a 50 cm3 beaker versus a 20 cm3 volumetric pipette, we can see that the beaker has an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 5 cm3. The absolute uncertainty for the volumetric pipette is plus or minus 0.08 cm3. So the volumetric pipette has a lower absolute uncertainty, which can help reduce random errors. Next we look at systematic errors. Systematic errors occur as a result of a flaw in the experimental design or apparatus. Systematic errors cause the measured value to be consistently higher or lower than the actual value. They cannot be reduced by conducting repeat trials. An example of a systematic error is heat loss to the surroundings when carrying out an enthalpy change experiment. Finally, we look at some examples of systematic errors. Heat loss in an experiment to measure enthalpy change. Losing a product, such as a gas, in a reaction. Overshooting the endpoint in a titration. Reading from the top of the meniscus when measuring volume. And finally, forgetting to zero a mass balance.